Hello my dear friends, you're in the military summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 10th of January of 2024. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates and details, so let's start. First we're going to start with the borderlands between Ukraine and Belarus. According to the local Belarusian authorities, the Ukrainians, since the beginning of the special military operation, since the beginning of, let's say, silent period of time on this area, managed to establish more than half a million of mines, different types, anti-troopers, anti-tank mines, mines, significant number, obviously, and the main purpose of these mining fields is to release release the Ukrainian forces from this territory and to send them, let's say, to Avdiivka and Bakhmut. Because during the previous period of time we got a lot of updates that Ukrainians, because of the fact that they haven't managed to adopt the mobilization law, are forced to send the border troopers from the borderlands, from the borders, to the combat lines. And this is like one of the way, one of the approach the Ukrainians tried to replace the troopers with some minefields and so on. Now we are moving to Kyiv, to Zelensky, because today he made a lot of very interesting things and the most important is his meeting in the Baltic states where he was talking about the current situation and you know that um, his he told a lot of very interesting things and probably Zelensky has some, I don't know, fatality skills because today when he was in the Baltic states he told the uh, presidents and the leaders of Lithuania that the Ukrainians and Ukraine and Baltic states need to finish him uh, like uh, Putin like in, and uh, after that if they are not uh, aren't able to finish him then uh, he will finish them so something like this and um, after these words the Baltic states Lithuania promised Ukrainians another military aid for 200 million euros and from one side this is not very big military aid but from another from the other hand if we uh, I'll remind you that the United States of America in the end of December sent Ukrainians a little bit less than 200 million dollars so small Smaller Lithuania is able was able to provide the Ukrainians the same amount of help as United States of America uh, did during the previous months every month. Now we are moving to another sector of the borderlands between Ukraine and Russian Federation. F few more soldiers were captured or surrendered in this area. And when talking about this territory, the Russians are pretty active in this area. For example, we got another geolocated video how the Russians managed to discover the Ukrainian position, strongholds along the borders, uh, let's say between Ukraine and Kursk or Belgorod region. And as a result of artillery fire, as a result of uh, FPV drone strikes, another checkpoint and the stronghold was destroyed. And we see that the Russians are pretty active. The Ukrainians do have losses in this area, and there it's not. We are not talking about hundreds, of course but tens from one from one day to another the Ukrainians are losing and the Russians are trying to check the entire situation the defense belt we see that from one front line the so Ukrainian soldiers took a decision to surrender from another uh, front line we see that Ukrainians were completely uh, we didn't expect Russian artillery strike and for example a little bit closer to Kupiansk we see the Russian fab strikes and as a result of another aviation bombing another building probably temporary position of Ukrainian forces was destroyed and when talking about the global scope of this area the Institute of Study of War for example made their own analysis of the situation and they're saying that the Russians do have plan to create the buffer zone uh, in the vis between Belgorod and Kharkiv with the purpose to reduce the bombing and shellings of the city. And you know uh, that uh, this is like this is the point because uh, in March there are going to be president elections in Russia, and obviously Putin needs to uh, he needs to win these elections obviously, and he also needs to have support of people from Belgorod, from Kursk, from the uh, cities that are located along the border. He needs their support, and the best way to get their support is to show them that he is doing something, and the only thing that he can do in this situation to show people that he cares about them is to create a buffer zone or at least to start acting in this direction. We don't know what kind of army the Russians need for these purposes, but uh, the Institute of Study of War says that the Russians are planning to establish 15 kilometers buffer zone. So, and from this perspective, it is very interesting to understand what is 15 kilometers buffer zone. Uh, first of all, what is 15 kilometers? Let's say if we take this territory and let's say if we calculate the distance, so approximately this is the line, this is the area that the Russians are going to dig in, uh, in deep inside of Kharkiv region. And 
And if we uh, create some uh, cloud, it will give us better understanding of the Russian plans. So this is something that the Russians are planning or will try to establish control over during the possible buffer zone creation. So from one side not so many, but from the other side, if the Russians are able to establish control over this territory, they will basically return every single city and village they left during the Ukrainian counter-offensive operation that took place in 2022. And for these purposes, the Russians will be forced to establish control over the cities like Volfchansk, very big city with significant significant number of forests, uh, buildings, it's like, it's not Avdiivk, but it's like Solidar. The Russians will be forced to return to Lipci, uh, to Kazachi Lopen, to Veliki Prakhody, to Udy, a lot of cities and villages, and this trip is not going to be so easy. It's not something that you can do and repeat the story of 2022. It should be a very professionally prepared operation. It's going to be a very tough operation, very difficult one, and uh, just to start uh, something that the Russians have already started in Novomikhailovka or in Avdeevka or in Kupinsk in the vicinity Sinkovka. It's not the thing that the Russians should start because it will lead to another year or years of clashes at the same place without any progress. The Russians need a plan. They need a plan and probably they have some if the Institute of Study of War start talking about upcoming and possible buffer zone creation. Another Ukrainian temporary position was destroyed as a result of uh, Iskandar there probably strike now we are moving to Sinkovka and right before we start making this video we got a lot of very interesting geolocations from this territory first of all I'll remind you that uh, these days those days the uh, the head of Ukrainian military sector had a meeting in, in the vicinity of Sinkovka by this meeting they were wanted to show and publish the show the Russians that they are not afraid of any offensive operation that everything is under complete Ukrainian control that everything is so secure that three main bosses of Ra Ukrainian army are able to get here and to have a meeting right in front of Russian positions. From the other side we got another very interesting probably unique uh, scenes, unique footage of the use of Archer artillery system. I don't remember the uh, we have such a video before. So on this video a Ukrainian civilian was moving along the road and he managed to make a video record the use of Archer artillery system. Very interesting one as you can see the distance from this, uh, this video was geolocated. As you can see the distance between between this that archer system artillery system and the closest let's say russian position somewhere in sinkovko liman pierre is around 17 kilometers so it's it's a really good distance and uh, the russians have some problems with such distances the only weapon they can do use to attack uh, let's say this type of weapon is lancet but not so t not so often they can use and to discover and to let's say to cross the territory to attack now we are moving to Sinkovka once again. Right before I start making this video, we got another geolocated video uh, from the Russian side of Russian offensive operation in direction of this village. As a result of uh, that attack, uh, just a second, we need uh, to just a second uh, the russians were storming this area and uh, according to this video as you can see the snow left this territory so probably this is a very recent and fresh video on this scene we can see close combat between russian soldiers this they, those were russian soldiers and ukrainian soldiers for this building so it was like a, 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 a let's close combat exactly in this area and as i understand according to this video we need to change the map once again and to color this territory into the gray zone because the Russians do have possibilities to get there to fight with the Ukrainians. Probably they don't have long term positions, but they can enter and they can fight on the outskirts of the village. Now we are moving further to Parath uh, Petra Pavlovka. The Russians published the video of FPV drone strike against another Ukrainian position or tank or armored vehicle or stronghold somewhere in this area. So, without any progress on the ground, just a video showing that the Russians do have possibilities to have certain control over the supply roads above this territory. Now we are moving to Bakhmut Artyomov's direction. We have a lot of very interesting details and updates. Once again, the Russians are saying that they continue offensive operation inside of Bogdanovka. We still haven't received even a single geolocated video of confirmation of Russian progress, let's say, along these lines. But today, 
one of the most reliable Russian sources, one of the most reliable Russian military expert, I'm not talking about Riber, but about another one, reported that as a result of clashes, uh, the Russians managed to establish control over the central part of Bogdanovka, and uh, uh, that Ukrainians were forced to step back further to the southwestern part. So once again, according to very reliable Russian resource, as a result of offensive operation, the Russians managed to establish control or at least to create this area area as a gray zone for now we still are not going to change the color of this map because we need at least videos to to do this uh, the clashes continues in the vicinity of a new cemetery the russian sources published the video how they were bombing and attacking with fpv drones the ukrainian infantry in this area a significant number of fpv drone bombings significant losses from the ukrainian side but yet the cemetery is in the gray zone the same story uh, in the area between Khromova and popovo forest the clashes um, between the fields without any progress in any favor. The same story on the southern direction, the Ukrainians attacked the Russian forces with FPV drones, which confirms the Russian presence in this area, but as you can see there is also no progress in the direction of Ivanovska. Now we are moving to Avdeevka area. We have some certain updates from this territory as well. The Russians continue bombing and attacking the Ukrainian forces with, a, a, with the guided bombs. And as you know, the Russians are improving their weapon. And tomorrow we're going to discuss new Russian uh, guided bomb uh, 1500 uh, um, and the FAP 1500 with, let's say, this gu guided model. And also the Russians are uh, have finished the production and work with... Um, technical documentation and technical developments of new uh, cluster guided bomb with uh, with guided bomb and this is uh, we have some article even about this i have added this icon above moscow this is it so th this is going to be a testing of newest glide bomb drill has been completed and it's ready to, for mass production this guided bomb used the something like navigation satellite navigation and the radius of this bomb is from 30 till 50 kilometers this is the cluster uh, let's aviation bomb and the this year the russians are start are going to start using this guided bomb on the combat line and the main purpose of this guided bomb is not to destroy the manpower but the most this uh, uh, the purpose of this guide bomb is to destroy armored vehicles ground-based radar stations power plants control centers and anti-aircraft missiles so against armored vehicles so to destroy to damage and to reduce the ukraine possibilities so let's say to hide anywhere so this is a very powerful one for now there is no such a guided bomb on the combat line but soon the russians are going to start using it the ukrainians also bombed the russian position somewhere in Donetsk. they managed to discover in the Sinovat another artillery position another warehouse and as a result of artillery strike the ukrainians destroyed destroyed that ammo depot. Now we are moving to Marinka direction, to the south Donetsk area. We have a lot of very interesting updates. The Russians continue their offensive operation in direction of Georgievka and currently, as you can see, according to geolocations, the Russians are mainly focused on the northern part. They are trying to bypass this area, uh, Novo um, Georgievka, along this northern line. And for these purposes, the Russians are bombing and attacking this territory heavily. We have a very interesting geolocated video. On this video, we can see how the Russians were bombing this video from this angle, let's say from the angle of artillery point of view. But later we got another video or the same video, but from another angle, how the Russians were bombing this idiot from this from the drone. On this scene, you can see how the Russians were attacking this territory. This is it. If you take a look at map, I'm pointing on it. So this is the interception of these three lines. And uh, if you take a look at this map once again, you're gonna see that the Russians were attacking this territory, but the main stronghold is located to the northeast this is the main stronghold this is it like letter uh, r so this is it and on the map on the video this is this fortification area so as you can see the russians are not bombing this stronghold because they want to uh, attack and to penetrate the king's defense belt between two defense defense areas one is northern part residential area of georgievka and the second one is that uh, stronghold so the Russians were bombing heavily, attacking the Ukrainians, so it's something like artillery preparation. Also the Russians were bombing not just this territory, also the Russians were bombing the village itself with the purpose to pin down the Ukrainians, uh, to slow them down and just to prepare the foothold before further offensive operations. So once again, the Russians are planning to move something like this and from this uh, area they're going to 
move to the stronghold from one direction and probably the next days they will activate their movements in this direction as well and the same story about Georgievka so Georgievka is under very heavy uh, pressure from the Russian side we see that the Russians uh, have increased their speed and they're moving very much faster in comparison with Marinka so we'll see what is going to be next now we are moving to Novomikhailovka area we have a lot of very interesting details and updates from this territory first we're going to talk about the southern direction as we discussed a lot of mappers pro-ukrainian pro-russian neutral pro-western pro-eastern have updated their maps showing that as a result of russian offensive operation they managed to establish control over this territory this is significant progress significant result from the russian side and uh, the main purpose of the russians is to half encircle novomikhailovka and to half encircle novomikhailovka at least from the south the russians have just one barrier and we are talking about this stronghold this is a very powerful stronghold called very powerful fortification area that the russians can't attack because the uh, the area uh, the area of attack is too short and to get uh, to make this area bigger wider the russians need to improve their positions first to the west of salotka so the next step that the russians will try to uh, make during the next few days they're going to move to the second the next tree line in this area and they will try to establish control over something like this and as soon as the russians control establish control over this territory over this uh, um, uh, let's say line then they will be able to start offensive operation in direction of this stronghold at least from three directions from the southern direction from the southeastern direction and of course from the eastern direction and using these three roads of attack the Russians might have bigger chances, better chances to establish control. And if the Russians are able to get this stronghold and to get this stronghold under their control, then they will be able to complete probably 50% of the things they need to do, maybe even more, maybe even 80% of the things they need to do to collapse Novomikhailovka completely. So this is the current situation and we'll see what is going to be next. Other important updates are coming from the northern part, from the strongholds. We have already discussed this video in the previous uh, event, in the previous morning update. Uh, we were talking that the Ukrainian tank was moving to the fire position and after the Ukrainian tank was empty, they took a decision to withdraw, to move back to the strongholds. And a lot of mappers have already updated their maps showing that the Ukrainian tank was under fire of Russian FPV drones and, the fire, uh, and after that the Ukrainian tank got on the minefield. But uh, I was mistaken and most of the mappers analysis also made the mistake. This Ukrainian tank was destroyed as a result of Russian tank fire. So he, this tank didn't uh, answer the minefields because obviously very unlikely the Russians reconnaissance team has possibilities to enter this territory right in front of Ukrainian strongholds and to mine this area. There are chances but they're not so big. It's not very it's an easy operation. And today right, uh, I, right before I start making this video we got just one interesting note. We got during the day a lot of updates that Russians managed to do to, make, to improve their positions in the vicinity of Novomikhailovka. They managed to break through Ukrainian defense belt and many many other different things and right before i start making this video we got this photo it's not a video it's just a photo published probably by the soldiers from this area probably very soon we're going to receive more details and according to this photo we can count at least three or even four or five armored vehicles two tanks and three armored vehicles are armored personnel carriers behind so the russians were attacking this territory with tanks with a very powerful armored fist and according to direction and destination of the movements we can make a conclusion that the russian tanks were moving something like this like along this line and they were attacking exactly in this direction very difficult to ex understand where exactly the russians started their offensive operation they may start this offensive offensive operation something like this the russians may start this offensive operation something like this and to move along the true line but it doesn't matter the most important is that the russians were moving the russian armored fist was moving like this the ukrainian tank uh, um, let's say moved in front of the russian convoy and was trying to 
attack the Russians, but when the Ukrainians realized the level of uh, uh, the number of Russian tanks heading to him, he turned back and start moving, start running away. Also, the Ukrainian tank, as you can see, uh, started and uh, launched smoke screen. I don't think that there is a reason to start smoke screen against FPV drones or against minefields. Smoke screen can't help you to avoid mines or to avoid FPV drone because FPV drone can fly, he can change, he, he's flexible. The only thing, the only reason why can you use smoke screen is if you want to hide your tank from enemy tank because it's like tunnel vision you can see in front of you and if you see the smoke it's very difficult to get obviously so the Ukrainian tank uh, launched a smoke screen uh, like something like this there was a smoke screen somewhere here and uh, but the Russian tank uh, this tank when he approached this line attacked the Ukrainian tank and destroyed so we have the first geolocated video confirmation of Russian progress along this tree line and that, that that as a result of Russian offensive operation they managed to break through the Ukrainian defense belt somewhere to the northern part of Novomikhailovka and to capture some territories yet we haven't received any updates about any progress of that attack but obviously something like this probably was captured by the Russians as a result of that attack and this is not just like a problem for the Ukrainians this is the disaster the disaster from the very big letter furthermore if the Ukrainians did have some positions in Zverinets or a little bit to the north everything collapsed automatically after the Russian attack and now the Ukrainians are half encircled and the and this is a very big half encirclement. Currently, as I understand, there are very heavy clashes for this stronghold, and there are very high chances that the Russians have already bypassed this stronghold as well. And if it's true, then this is not just disaster, this is the end of Novomikhailovka, and the days of this village is are numbered. Anyway, we'll see, and uh, sooner or later we're going to receive more updates and more details about this Russian offensive operation that took place those days. Uh, also, the Russians published the video how they were fabbing the Konstantinovka, they were bombing and destroying the Ukrainian ammo depots, uh, fuel depots, with the purpose to slow down the Ukrainians, to destroy the reserves, operational reserves, because, as we know, Novomikhailovka currently is reduced to ruins, was reduced to ruins, and the only area the Ukrainians can use for some reserves and some support is Konstantinovka and now the focus from Novomikhailovka slowly step by step is moving to the west in direction of this village because this is the next primary target of the Russians so battle for Novomikhailovka as I understand is about to, to be finished by the Russians I'm not saying that this is going to be finished like tomorrow or the day after but if the Russian progress on this flank will be confirmed with the geolocated videos or at least by the mappers reliable mappers then this is the end there is no like chances to uh, let's say to counter attack or to st uh, stand in this area when you uh, are attacked from 30 360 degrees now we are moving to uh, Vremivka tactical bridgehead in Zaporozhye area. We haven't received anything from this area. Ah, another important note. According to the Ministry of Defense, the Russians reported that during the previous 24 hours, the Ukrainians tried to counterattack the Russians with uh, forces of 79th Airborne Assault and 72nd Mechanized Brigade. And uh, they were defeated. They lost around 170 soldiers, two tanks, three armored combat vehicles and four cars. And I'll remind you that these brigades are responsible for defense of this area this, these are core brigades and uh, now we see that a lot of things a lot of interesting updates are coming when talking about Krynki there are no changes in this area just FPV drone strikes the Russians attacking the Ukrainian boats the Ukrainians attack the Russian armored vehicles that still try to storm this village and still trying to cut the foothold no changes interesting updates are coming from the islands in the vicinity of Kherson on this video we can see the clearing Russian operation the Russian soldiers, Marines landed in Krynki and start clearing one building after another, which confirms some certain progress of the Russians or maybe some parts of these villages along the uh, rivers are under Russian control, but uh, the Russians entered the building and the building was attacked by the Ukrainians. And we got uh, the few explosions and fabs inside of Kherson. Uh, on this video we see how the Russians discovered Ukrainian positions and using fab they attacked this area. So we once again 
the Russians renewed the use of FAP on this direction, and the Russians were bombing the Ukrainian uh, positions in the vicinity of Dubrovska. So we see some activity on the southern part of Kherson. Maybe the Ukrainians are planning to renew uh, clashes for the islands, and they're planning to attack. Maybe who knows? So that's why the Russians are attacking possible Ukrainian uh, forces on this uh, tactical direction. And that's it for today. Military summary channel reminds to condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for your watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes to my Patreon. And have a good day. Bye-bye.